So what happens when you build networks using layer one equipment? Well, uh, suppose you want to connect uh, two PCs together and uh, you could just link them together with, let's say, with a copper cable and ethernet. So you're probably familiar that with Cat5e cable, the maximum length is 100 meters. Uh, that's 90 meters for the actual cabling and then five meters each, each end for the patch cables. Um, and beyond that, it's not guaranteed to work because the signal will degrade too much over longer distances. So you might say, well, okay, well, suppose I put some better cable in, suppose I buy a more expensive Cat6a cable. Uh, does that help? Well, actually, Cat6a cable also has the 100 meter limitation. What's different is that Cat6a will let you do 10 gigabits over 100 meters, whereas Cat5e will only let you do one gigabit over 100 meters. You don't actually gain any distance by using the more expensive cable, but you do gain the ability to run at higher speed. All right, well, then what about if you want to go longer than that, then you might have to look at some other kind of medium. So fiber would be another option. Now, again, depending on what speed you want to send out and what distance you want to go at, there are a number of different options. And so in the general rule is that multi-mode fiber is the worst. It runs at the slowest speeds and the shortest distances. And if you have single mode fiber, then that runs at high speeds and over very long distances. So you could build your link using fiber, but you're still going to reach some limitations. So with your single mode fiber, depending on the lasers and whatever you have, you might have a limit of 20 kilometers, or it might be 40 kilometers, or even sometimes 80, but you've still got that limitation there. Uh, another thing you might decide to build your network with is media converters. So you take a copper ethernet, you convert it to fiber, and then convert it back to copper again at the other end. Now this works fine, but it's not an ideal way to build your network. And the reason is that media converters are dumb, unmanaged devices. So you've added extra active devices in here, which are things that could fail, but you haven't got any way to manage them or monitor them. So they can't tell you, for example, what bit error rate they're seeing. They can't tell you what the strength of the light signals they're receiving is. And so you've got no way of knowing in advance when they're gonna fail. So ideally, you would try and avoid media converters in your network if you can, and put SFPs, for example, into SFP ports on switches because they are manageable. And even though they are only layer one devices, they will still give you this information that allows you to track the quality of the link and be able to detect failures.